Breaking. Yes. It came out earlier this year. I didn't really get a chance to see it. So I tracked it down. I heard it was really, really good. So I am going to uh, tell you about this. It's based on a true story. Brian Brown easily is a uh, Marine, a former Marine, is a vet who's fallen on hard times because his VA check stopped coming in. And he basically decides he's going to rob a Wells Fargo, hold it up basically to not really just get his money back, but also tell his story. So it's this sort of biopic. And John Boyega basically is the entire reason to see this film. There's, um, I'm going to go into spoilers. If you don't want spoilers, that's fine. Um, I don't find a whole lot of this film as redeeming as other people. Some people just love this film. Um, I'll get to the end. I'll tell you exactly why I don't. Um, I will also tell you that I think there is a film that's done this kind of concept significantly better than this film. Um, it definitely with more scale. Uh, this film is very, very small. They kept it very small. And um, there's good and bad with that. So, uh, okay, so there you go. Spoilers ahead. It opens basically with uh, uh, Brian talking to his daughter. He doesn't have any money. He's, he's, he's talking about money running out on his like pay phone, his little pay for some phone. Because it says it says, it says it's in uh, 2017 when this actually happens, right? He goes to this bank and says, I want my $25 out of my account, please. Then he writes on a piece of paper, I have a bomb. And he tells them basically, call 911, trigger the alarm. She's freaking out, right? The bank manager is played by uh, Nicole Bahari. She is uh, Sleepy Hollow and 42. She's the bank manager, and she's really, really, really calm. Uh, 911 finally picks up, and, um, you know, there's a lot of this comment about, like, you know, uh, it shows his, his paranoia. His moods and his mental state are all over the map. So there's little moments of highs and lows. So, like, for instance, they ask, um, the, the 911 operator asks what he's wearing. It's like, why do you want to know that? You got a sniper on me? It just starts freaking out, right? And then he'll... Um, take a call like there's a lady that calls in for the bank it's like a she's calling about her 401k and he's taking like intricate names like call so and so back here's whatever and he's telling these girls the teller and the bank manager i don't want your money i want the money from the people that took it i want the va's money because the va took his money because they think he owes money for like a gi bill and somehow they're legally allowed to just take the money even if it's not in arrears at least that's the premise of the film. And Brian is suffering from serious PTSD, inability to cope. He's been on a different levels of disability. He'd been working two jobs, but he missed time. It's just, it's basically a, a, a social commentary on the, the travesty of these vets who can't acclimate back into our system, right? And Boyogi is fantastic. I mean, I'll tell you that this heist bank robbery stuff is like 40 minutes though. It's like a lot of screen time and a lot of the promotion material and a lot of stuff you get, you get the other two characters as though there's something significant. Michael Kenneth Williams plays like the hostage negotiator. And then there's a reporter that he calls Lisa Larson, like a TV reporter. He's basically trying to get her to tell his story. You know, I want to be on live, right? I want to be on live. And when he ultimately does, the, the daughter sees that, right? So it is a cool consequence to all of this. Um, and you do have like flashbacks to like him being at the VA, making a scene, um, trying to, trying to talk his way through this whole situation to get it fixed. But it takes really another 20 minutes, like another hour, it's like hour into this before we really get the negotiator who really does matter. Uh, MKW doesn't really do a whole lot more than just like the generic bonding sympathy stuff. And it's like, turns out this is over like $892. And there's a cool lines about, you know, isn't your, your honor is worth more than $892. Your life is worth. He's like, no, I'm worth nothing. I'm nothing. I'm going to die tonight. Right. He knows this is not going to end well. Right. He just wants to get his story out there. Right. So it is um, kind of playing out like that. And you get the news reporter involved and he wants cigarettes. They come up with these schemes. But reality is it doesn't play out as he thinks. And then there's just this quick moment of pause and then bam sniper goes off takes the shot that's the end of the story and you have this long epilogue of cuts and shots and the hostage guy seeing the blood on the floor and then being told there's no real bomb um so i i hate it when they hollywood makes these true stories and they change radical things to make sure you have the opinion 
that they want you to have, right? So for me, um, it's they're ex, it's extremely racist to change Brian's physical appearance, right? He has like the shaved head with these glasses and a hoodie. He looks very, he talks like soft when he's talking most of the film, and then he has his highs, which is supposed to be his emotional swings. But he looks pretty much like a straight up looking dude. Whereas the photos of the real Brian, you know, he's got the gold chain and the hat and he's got this look about him, right? And they don't match. And it was changed on purpose so that you will be more likely to empathize with the John Boyega version of Brian than what actually Brian looked like. It really doesn't reflect what the real Brian was. It's just this they do this on purpose, right? The other thing that fits this is all of the white people in the film are not really likable people, right? The Lisa Larson news person is only wanting to involve for her own self gain, right? There's a, there's a quick shot at the end of the movie where she's like trying to sound like she was a victim and he, he did this call and somehow she was, I'm like, it's so gross, right? All of the cops uh, that matter are white and they're terrible people. They're rude to the hostage negotiator. They take advantage of his uh, ability to do his job properly. The sniper taking the shot, of course, is a white dude who wasn't supposed to take the shot yet. Um, the people in the VA, the person he's talking, he's like, just, it's just, there's so much sort of like these subconscious things that are done on purpose to manipulate you, the viewer. And I just don't, I hate it when I see those things. I just, I know that's there on purpose. I know all of this was contrived. I know there are elements that are true. They stay to true. They try to show you a couple side by sides, but they don't go too far down that rabbit hole because they don't want you to put two and two together. Right. Um, I said there's another film that did it better, right? That would be the Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker, Jeremy Renner stars as, you know, the the you know, detonating the bomb expert in the Middle East, can't acclimate, incredible film, Oscar winning film. This is I mean, I suppose if there were like ten slots, then Boyega could be considered for an Oscar. I just don't see it. There's only five slots. There's no way I think he's going to edge his way in. He gives a great performance. He does really well. I think the message of the film is fine and it needs to be a story, but it they seem like they're trying to stick race in at times. And this is a story about the failure of the government and the VA and this poor man that was wronged by the system writ large, couldn't get help proper. And everyone is just these apathetic government drones that don't care about people. And this guy snaps and it turns into a tragedy, right? And I don't think that really gets conveyed. It, it just And there's so much time spent on this early part of the film with the bank and standing around. I just, oh, I, I found this film to be way more tedious than some of the people that love it. I, I don't know what they're seeing that they like so much. This film is like more like a five for me. I wouldn't really watch it again. Um, it's not for everyone. If you like those kind of biopics, you like John Boyega, that's fine. It's good for you. I don't know. You guys know what you think. Uh, that's kind of my take on it. There's really not a lot else to say. It wouldn't be on my top 20 list or anything like that for the year. His performance would be. His performance is fine. But the rest of it, not so much. So that's my thoughts. Um, I'll let you go with that. Bob Ross. Bob Ross. All I do is chill. Chill. Life is a thrill for real, Bob Ross. I'll be too comfortable, drama. You don't wanna cause a problem. I'll solve it, Bob Ross.